I am the Commissar. That's my name. Forged Alliance Forever? That's the game. And who have we got with a claim to fame? We have the hot team versus the cold team in a 3v3 ladder match on a generated map, of course. Let's go in and meet our players. In the rearguard position for hot team, this is Geneva Checklist, 1641 rated, UEF in orange. In front of him, we have Toxic Hunter, 1502 rated, Seraphim in red. And last but by no means least for Hot Team, this is Ava X Magi, who we saw recently. He's 1968 rated, highest rated player in the game. He's Eon and he's in Burgundy. And matching off against them on the Cold Team, this is Pepito, 1737 rated, Eon in Mauve. In front of him, we have Horror Person, who is 1551 rated and Cybron in Baby Blue. And last but not least, this is Shaker, who is 1778 rated, also Cybron in Dark Blue. So overall, we have a composition of UEF, Sarah, and Eon versus Eon and two Cybrons. Now, a quick look at the map. There's a moderate scattering of reclaim everywhere, but nothing too immense for anybody to get their hands on. A couple of nice places to expand down here and mirrored up here, but they're reasonably safe. And then a smattering of mexes across the middle, but nothing too much, so might be quite a turtly map. These lakes are interestingly positioned, and you can get up onto this central plateau on foot here at each corner. So are we going to see any sailor action walking up from here from our Cybron players? Are we going to see any attempts to do sneaky stuff over here where this plateau, it's not really a plateau, you can walk up onto it, but it's quite large is my point and it's got a decent number of mixes so it could be worth taking. We've got Toxic coming out pretty quickly. He's planning to build these mexes with his comm. I don't like that. I would prefer an engineer to do that because that's a long walk when the comm could be coming up here and setting up camp earlier. Might even had, have had a chance to stop these engineers from Shaker because Shaker looks like he wants to get this hill locked down as soon as he possibly can so early engineers out. Same story on this side from Ava who has also sent two engineers in almost exactly the same pattern to claim these mexes. Looks like you've got decent greed from Geneva who's expanding to this area slightly faster than Pepito is in the equivalent position and we have an engineer drop with a couple of mantis on board coming out from horror. Now Ava has positioned an Aurora and Spirit tank and scout combination here to try and stop any engineers getting through here. But he will see this, but he'll just see it flying gracefully over his head and not actually um, something that his tanks can intercept, and even if it were. There's a couple of tanks in there. However, it looks like he sent this Spirit to follow them and keep an eye on them while he brings his comm forward. Horror and Shaker, um, Horror is bringing his comm forward and Shaker's currently staying in base. So is Pepito. Pepito's bringing his comm forward, whereas Geneva is staying in base. So each team sending two comms forward. Meanwhile, Horror lands over here and is setting up quite a decent sized emplacement. And we've got an early bomber out from Shaker, which you better have a look at. This could be an immense pickup if it drops a bomb right there. Oh, good split from Geneva, but three engineers still taken out by that bomber. Even if it dies right now, it's more than paid for itself, and I'm not seeing anything to stop it. It comes back for another pass. Again, Geneva splits, which is pretty good. 
but he still uses one of the two NGs. Up here we see Ava pushing in, but with that Aurora that he had over here, but the Mantis are more than enough, enough to clear it up. A couple more units coming in, but I don't know whether that's going to be enough. Down here, how's that bomber doing? Well, it's picked up another kill and another. Six engineers killed so far is pretty good for that bomber, but there is anti-air coming out here and there's an inti. Between them, they'll probably shoot it down. Will it get a seventh? No, it should misses the drop and it's caught but still six NGs killed is more than paying for itself on that bomber meanwhile as it, the trickle from Ava continues but with three factories of production already online and a fourth about to come up horror could be set to hold this so Ava is thinking of coming in and dealing with it in person he's just bringing his com up here but that will leave an opening for Papito to come through here and cause some trouble. On this side, Toxic playing a more conservative game. He's setting up an emplacement here with his com. He's bringing tanks forward. This could be nice though. Is this... It looks like NG's on board from Shaker. And he's just going to set up a secret little encampment here. Very nice. But Toxic has a radar here. So does he see it? He does. He does not. He's got. He's at, he, he's not quite power still, but he he should be able to see that. But I think that he might be having a little problem. He doesn't see that drop. Meanwhile, here comes Ava heading forward in person, but there's a lot of Mantis here assisting the engineers to throw up point defences. And in combination with those point defences, I think that Mantis horde might be enough to drive Ava back. The point defence opens fire and Ava does indeed fall back. He's naked, he doesn't have any upgrades to help him take that on. And Pepito is coming out here to support Horror's drop in person. That And... Horror himself has walked out to this area so two comms v1 on this side and Geneva is in his base so it's still one com v1 on this side. Cold team also being greedy about getting their greasy paws on the middle where they've got what are these engines doing just sitting around doing nothing. Shaker has picked up an engine I think he might be coming to drop here gun going down for both combs on this side but I see an engagement here and there are, there are spectres Perpito has brought out spectres and he's forcing Ava back and with this the mantis from horror comes swarming down they're faster than the com, most things are and in combination with the spectre fire which are supported by inties which will see off the inties from Gen Geneva I think Ava is in a bit of trouble. He's trying to get out, he's dodging, he's trying to get up onto this cliff, but he's into the red. Spectre fire continues to rain down on him. 1500, 1400. He is running out of health, he's still surrounded by Mantis, all three Spectres are still alive. Boom! Ava goes down. The highest rated player is our first ejection from the game at just under 9 minutes. And that could be a real swing in favour of the code team. Who are on top of that. I was about to say they were ahead in eco, but I think that must have been the transfer because the hot team are suddenly ahead in eco again. However, looks like there's more map control for code team. And speaking of that look at this that's now four factories another one going up point defense going up i think there's enough here that shaker can push out and i mean obviously toxic knows about it but does he have enough to stop it it looks like the answer may be no so toxic is going to have to worry about that but he does have an ilshi coming in and this is all t1 and Ilshis, like the best T2 land units. So, 
they should have no problem cleaning up this if he gets more than a couple in here and there's two of she's already there toxic my dude just wait here for that ability to catch up and you will be fine probably but toxic has his mind on other matters as shaker with gun and stealth is coming in to drive toxic back toxic is ruled into the spot he has gun he's halfway to nano and he's got more spam i would say than shaker but he can't move at the moment, so if Shaker can position his com well, then he'll be able to get a good bit of damage in, but he's going straight to the fight. I think that may be a mistake. I think we should have looped around a bit here to try and damage the spam from Toxic. And he is going to be held back. I think Toxic will finish that nano. Over here, Shaker has tried to push forward, and he is taking out the production, but there are now two Ilshis in position and a third coming up and that should be enough to clean this up and none of these are considering T2 does Shaker have T2 I assume he does yes he does but none of these are considering T2 so with enough Ilshis Toxic should hold this back no problem now Geneva who's inherited this from Avis still is actually withholding I see T3 air from Capito we'll talk about that in a moment but um with these two comms here, I think there should be enough to wipe Geneva off this plateau. There's slightly more T2 from Geneva, but there is a bit of T2 I saw in here, I think. Oh, that, yes, there's a Rhino, and there's also a point defense T2 going up. So, this would be the perfect time for Horror to smash Geneva off that plateau. Is he going to do it? Anyway, looking at the air, we do have T3 air from... Geneva and he's got these two on the upgrade. Has he actually got T3 P gems though? I don't think he does. So Pepito, who absolutely does, will have the air advantage and he's gonna make use of it. He is building a strat, so we'll have to see what he's able to get done with that. Meanwhile, over here, Shaker has fallen back, he's massing his units up. Both these players on this flank are still reliant on T1 spam. Toxic has gun and nano now. Shaker has gun and stealth. But as things stand, Toxic has the superior force and could overwhelm Shaker if he pushed in. And here's the strat. The strat is out from Pepito. Is he going to be able to achieve a great deal with it? It's been seen. Toxic's pinged it. And Ava is suggesting getting up a Sam. And he might be going for the Air HQ. That would be lovely if he could pick it up. He gets two of the P gens. But the T3 P gen is now up and running. And ASFs are being produced from two T3 Air factories. So there are a couple of ASFs from Pepito supporting. But this strat is really going to have to pay right now. And that's a nice drop, but he'll need two more to do actually inflict the damage. And I think that strat is going down. I say that, but... Well, now the Sam will kill it before it makes a third pass. So it'll get the second, but that won't be enough. One of the air factors into the red, and that ion reactor needed only one more strat hit. But... That wasn't quite enough, and that save, that save of the air HQ, could be crucial in this game. Shaker going for Nano, heavily assisted by his Mantis. Meanwhile, those Ilshis are indeed clearing this up. They've taken out the PDs, they're taking out the factories, there's not enough production to stop five Ilshis. So, Toxic is going to have no problem taking this hill back, but that did waste a bit of Ilshi production here. Shaker needs to have taken advantage of it to bring some T2 up here, while Toxic's T2 is mostly down here. He has got an Ilshi in here. To me, it's looking like Toxic just has the better setup here than Shaker, and he needs to take advantage of it. Over here, thanks to the Com and the PD creep, it's looking like Horror is going to hold Geneva back and maybe force him back quite a bit here, but Horror needs to come up and take out this hill, which has a decent number of mixers on it. If he can build on that himself, he will be in a great position. However, 
is Shaker going to push or is he going to fall back? Meanwhile, quick check on Ecos. What have we got? Lovely balance from Pepito. Horror also doing well. Over to the hot team. Geneva nicely balanced. Okay, well, I guess that's just a textbook example of nice balance from everyone. Nobody's got any eco trouble. Will that change as this raid comes charging in to Geneva's base? Mainly T1 surviving. There's a couple of rhinos up here, but there is T3 production here, making harbies for Geneva. There are turrets going up, the rhinos are going down. I don't think this is going to get any traction, and I think Homer needs to focus up here first. Toxic hiding in the water for some reason. He's not damaged, he's just hiding in the water. Maybe he just wants to swim. Maybe it's time for a bath. Same with Geneva. The pitcher also having a bath. And Vato is finally joined in the bottom left as Toxic comes out of the water. And Toxic utterly has this. Look at this, he's got a shield, he's got point defense, he's got his gun nanocom. And Shaker recognizes it and he falls back. But Toxic keeps pushing and Shaker will have to bring his units back in. But I think that Toxic has enough to take Shaker here. Is he going to push? Is he going to keep it? Is he going to make the kill? Well, look at that. Shaker's spam is just being shredded. And Shaker's lost more hits than Toxic. And if Toxic goes in, he can make the kill and take out the highest rated player for Cold Team. Revenge for AV. Yeah, look at this. He's going to he's gonna take it. Shaker trying to just do as much damage as he can before he dies, but there's no way he's getting out of this. And he moves to the so that he centrally faced the comb bomb everything when he dies and he dies boom there goes shaker at 17 minutes into the game and both teams have now lost their top rated player and over here we see geneva pushing in he's got t3 he's got both harbies and snipers he's got this position to break which has a shield it has point defense and it now has t2 rt which could be a good counter to the snipers if the shield can stay up long enough but we've got Mobile Arty at T3 out from Geneva trying to break that position. Will Horror get up enough T2 Arty to take down this attack before it breaks in? Well, down goes the shield, so maybe the answer is no. How much more damage can Geneva do before he breaks through? Boom, the shield is down. Will Horror react or will he renounce this position? Because those two T2 Arties are quite an investment and I wouldn't want to lose them, almost 3 key to RTs if I were him or is he looking elsewhere at present because he hasn't tried to rebuild that shield yet now he has not and he's got point defenses, he's got his com but these RTs I think are going to fall and I think Hover's accepting that and falling back with his com so that is quite an investment which Horror is going to lose. And meanwhile, Toxic is over here on the other hill, claiming it with these Ilshis. So, definite swing in favour of Hot Team, but this time it is Cold Team who have the eco lead by about 40 or so. So, map control swinging in favour of Hot Team, but Cold Team have ecoed up a little bit more. Both players developing their air grids here. Cold Team still holds the middle hill, but that's only got four mixes compared to the six on, well, five if you're not counting that one, compared to the five on each of these hills, plus the six up front, that Hot Team are holding by holding the hills. And that's a decent amount of Harby and Sniper Fire, and I think Horror might need to worry a little bit. He's got his own Tech 3 coming out. He's got Bricks being produced here. And that's going to do a good job. One on one, Bricks beat Harvey's, but that's not one on one. That's one on like five. So, got to be careful, Horror. 
and his com is unupgraded so I would not be sending it out to face T3 like that. But Pepito thinks he has air control and as a result he's using restorers to lay down some fire from the air but Geneva is prepared for that. He has a redeemer, one of these silly little over bots walking around and that T3 anti-air fire plus this flak will be enough to see off the restorers. However, Pepito is not put off by this. His solution to this is more restorers. He already has five out on the field. And Geneva is pushing. Pepito is putting up the point defences. Pepito has bricks. He's now got three and he's shortly to get a fourth. He's also got some rhinos. Is this, in combination with the shield, going to be enough to force back Geneva, who has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight or nine harbies? Well, Geneva thinks it's not worth the risk. And did I just see the bouncer go down? In come the restorers. However, that's a decent force of ASFs from Geneva. And while restorers have decent anti-air, it's not enough to take that many ASFs. And there isn't any anti-air territory in here from horror. And Pepito's ASFs feel like they can't take this fight. So unfortunately for Pepito, he is just going to lose those five restorers. But he's building more. And maybe this time he'll support them with his ASFs. Over here we have horror trying to push back but Geneva's army is too big for that and horror in turn is going to be forced to retreat again. He's still got a lot of T2 production here but this one's coming up to T3 and will be assisting with the brick production. On this side having completely cleaned up this hill he hasn't built on it yet maybe we ought to see a drop coming out here from Toxic to capitalize on those mexes, but he's got a decent force here. However, Ilshis may be tough though, but they are still beaten by T3. There's only one brick here so far with the second coming up from Pepito. I think that if Toxic needs to do damage here, he needs to move in now, but maybe he thinks there are more bricks than there actually are, or maybe he's worried about those restorers, because there's a bit of anti air in there, but most of it's T1. So. For whatever reason he isn't pushing in and is that our first experimental notification i think it might be toxic is starting a chicken here in his base and we now have quite a swing on the ecos. I was about to say that Hot Team looked ahead, but suddenly Code Team jump ahead a little bit. Both teams working on their ecos. Toxic doing a little better than Horror, but Horror doing a little better than Geneva, and that's probably just down, down to the mech split. This, I think, is a mistake from Toxic. He's still got a bunch of T1 mechs here that are pretty safe and could really do with being teched up and but that said horror has more but could he be power stored let's have a quick check yeah he's power stored that's where horror's eco is going he needs some power is he building any he's focusing on mexes over there and I think that might have solved it. Yeah, that solved his problem. And suddenly, Code Team jump ahead in Eco as Horror solves his power store. Harvey's raiding in here, and because all of Horror's main production, including his HQ, is up here. He hasn't really got anything actually protecting all this juicy eco to stop these harbies, apart from maybe his actual com, who's unupgraded, as is Pepito's. Now, Pepito has some restos which might come and do the job, but would he sacrifice them if he sent them in? At the moment, there's no anti air tanks in here, so it should work, but he's got to be careful because he knows that. He there have been anti-air tanks from Geneva. Meanwhile, big battle going down here. 
The Harveys are dying to bricks and they could be better positioned. The bricks are in a firm clump, whereas the Harveys are a little further apart and not all of them are able to engage at once. But they're still making a bit of progress. And these artillery are helping out by bombarding from further back. Meanwhile, the restorers have taken out, but oh no, Pepito, you've let your restorers get away from your ASFs again, and again you've had your ASFs cleaned up. Your restorers cleaned up by the ASF from Geneva, and now your ASFs are getting cleaned up too. I think Geneva is going to win this air fight, and I think Geneva is going to win air. And I think that is going to be a key turning point, because suddenly... That restorer defence is no longer an option for Pepito because he does not have air superiority. Meanwhile, big force from Toxic with a decent number of Othium of Massing here and just a few bricks from Pepito on this side. I think Pepito, Pepito might have been echoing a bit too greedily now because he hasn't got the army or the air force that he needs in order to fight back against this huge force from Toxic. And the Ecos have balanced themselves out, so to me it feels like we've got quite a advantage for the hot team now, with air superiority, map control, and even Ecos, though in fact, I said they were even when I last spoke, but now, well, Hot Team draw ahead and then Cold Team catch up. So, good balance in Ecos between the teams. What's Geneva saying no to? My help X. Toxic is asking whether his chicken, which is about to finish, should go and help Geneva up here. And Geneva says no, he thinks he's got it. Which is quite bold, but he might have it, we'll have to see. And that means that Toxic can send his chicken in here and this force will just smash through Pepito's outpost here that he inherited from Shaker. And does Pepito have any experts on the way? Well, he's got a nuke defense, which is wise at this stage of the game. There's a notification for Toxic finishing off his chicken. But I don't think that... Oh. I was talking rubbish. Here is a GC. Now, it will be finished by the time Toxic gets over here. Meanwhile, though, the advance from Geneva masses up, and he's going to be using this to guard his artillery while they rain fire on this down at range, which will force Horror to come out and... And we also got tactical missiles here. What are they targeting? So, definitely going for the longer range shenanigans here. They take, they're targeting the HQ, but that's heavily assisted, and it will need at least one more round of tactical missiles to take out the HQ, maybe two. But if he can take out the HQ, that'll be huge. Meanwhile, where's that chicken? Walking across the water here, it is coming out to join this fight. Geneva, if only you knew, you need to fire another round of missiles. In fact, now you need to fire two more because it's being assisted so hard that it's prepared almost to full health. Meanwhile, Horror finishes his GC. And I'm assuming, yeah, he's going to bring that down here. He's expecting to just walk straight in here, but little does he know there was a chicken coming, which might cause him to think twice. Now, I think that with this amount of Othiums and general support, plus all these PDs, I think the chicken wins easily against the GC, even if the GC is supported by this force over here. Horror has immediately started on another GC. Have we got another chicken coming from Toxic? Doesn't look like it just yet. But I don't think that second GC will be anywhere. Where's it going? It is still going there. It will be anywhere near finished. Now, Geneva is scouting out with his ASFs to see if there's an air response, and there isn't. And as a response, he sends out a wave of broadswords. 
And this eco is all fresh for the taking. This is going to be horrific for Cold Team. At the moment, they have a slight eco lead, but they're about to lose an awful lot of mechs. And what? What's this? What's this one little Othium? Where's he come through? One Othium has snuck through, taking out a couple of mechs. What are you doing? Meanwhile, we are seeing this experimental fight about to go down, but let's have a quick look at this and F's in the chat for those mexes because this is ghastly for Cold Team. We'll see exactly how much damage it does in a second, but no, the, ch the GC is falling back from this force and he's trying to bombard with these mobile missile launchers. But this chicken feels like it's going to just come in here and take that while the GC is out of position up here. And the GC is walking round the back. This not need to fall back. Meanwhile, how's the raid going? The Nexus are continuing to fall and the ASF from Perpetual have taken out the broadswords. But Perpetual has, as a result, lost air again. And that is horrific for Cold Team who are now over us. 100 eco behind their opponents and the chicken pushes the GC comes in to face it off and it's microwave laser beam actually is that technically a microwave laser? can't remember, don't care anyway it's laser face opens up and it opens up on the chicken but the chicken had a bit of shielding and there's more Othium than there is Brick able to do the damage. I think the Chicken is going to win this fight. It's going to be close, but the Chicken is going to win. However, the Bricks are then going to defeat Chicken. Am I right? Let's find out. The Chicken turns, but yes, the Bricks take it down. However, this is still a big, big force from Toxic doing the damage. Meanwhile, we can see up here another broadsword has come in, and there were also some Janus coming to finish off what the broadsword started. Line of flat going up here from Pepito, and also Sam's here, but they're not going to stop this force, which is still a significant force and is getting work done in here. Spectres out from Pepito can come in to defend. There's a little bit of anti-air in here but it's not a great deal and actually there might be enough bricks to hold it off. So these spectres going over here but there's, but there's lightning tanks here, there's a lot of lightning tanks here and the spectres last only the blink of an eye. Meanwhile, holy cow, how many harbies is that? That is 90 harbies, my dudes. 90 harbies. Now, that's something like 30,000 DPS in there, give or take. Maybe a bit short, so, but we're talking like 9 Monkey Lords worth of firepower. And this Monkey Lord is almost completed, but almost is not enough. And I think Horror is about to be in a very horrific situation indeed. His monkey was 90% done. 99% done. That 99% done monkey has been denied. That's horrific. 1% and there would have been a monkey laser smashing its way and Horror just resigns. I would resign too in that situation. He's had his main production facility and his HQ taken out. He's had his, he's had his eco taken out and Horror just gives in leaving Pepito all alone. And there are still these broadswords smacking away at his eco. Now he's putting up immense, immense amounts of anti-air firepower in his base. But how is he going to be able to expand and then protect this area again? And look at the eco difference. He's 400 eco behind. Does he have something up his sleeve? Well, he's got a GC under construction. And he's working on getting his hands on the reclaim over here. And that will help him, but will it help him enough? Because this is now a huge difference in favour of Hot Team, who have map control. They have eco control, they have air control, and they have 90 harbies. Which is insane.
is this now just going to be a textbook example of how to wipe someone out, or is this going to be a glorious comeback for Pepito? Place your bets in the comments below, because you know me, I do love a good comeback, but surely there's no way he's coming back from this, right? Right? Now the Harpies are swarming in, but that's a bit of a tricker. And if this GC can be completed, he might just stand in the pick them off as they come in. He's focusing on another GC here rather than using those engineers to push up T3 mexes. I know what I would be doing in his position. In come some spectres and sure the airs have to in position to support them but Geneva's got this huge air force Geneva can just wipe those out and he should if he sees it and it looks like he has seen it and those spectres are going down meanwhile though this GC completes and if the harbies continue to trickle then that GC will be enough to stop them but if the harbies mess up then that GC is going to be overwhelmed and the second GC completes at the same time up here but Pito, my dude, please use these to rebuild your eco. You really need it. And indeed, all those gunships have been wiped off the map. And another wave comes out, but what good is that? That's a lot of Janus. And now the Harbies here are falling back in order to mass up, and that's the right decision, because massed up, they can 100% take that. Ooh, are we going for an HQ snipe? Are we going for an air HQ snipe? Where's the HQ? It's there. No, we're just going for a general air grid snipe, but it's going to get some chain reaction. Boom! Nice amount of air grid taken out by those Janus. Meanwhile, the... GC is wisely waiting for its ally to catch up, but if it just stands there, then the Janus can attack it from the air with no reprisals, and we are seeing Sam's being just dodged around now by Pepito. That's nice though, He's we've got Toxic with a shielded emplacement protected from the air by Sam's, and he's just putting T3 Arty in there with which to rain down fire, and if you can take up this HQ with that Arty barrage, that would be rather nice. Pepito is working on a monkey here with a little bit of protection and he's actually got a decent army. So, will it be enough though when this next chicken comes along? Because at the moment all of the experimental focus for Pepito is up here, ready to try and see off this immense, immense horde of harpies. a lot of gunships and the third GC is coming forward. Can three GCs take on that many harbies? It's gonna be a fight worth seeing. Geneva completes an XP. What's he built? Presumably some sort of GC. Yeah, I think he's gonna wait. So, Pepito doesn't know about that. He's gonna have to think. Does he push now? Now he's got three GCs and try and break his way through here because if he doesn't then this GC will essentially negate, yes, Pepito is pushing. I think that's the right choice, but is it going to be enough? And this GC, rather than support the Harbies, that's just coming through the water, and it's going to maybe pop out here and ambush Pepito. That would be rather mean, but it's what he might need to do. And that is a big army. Where's it going? It's massing up, it's ready to... But Pepito has seen the immense amount of air-to-ground firepower from Geneva and he's retreating to the water. Which might be the right choice, but it does mean that the way is now open for the Harbies. Pepito's gunships come out here and to try and take care of this mobile arty emplacement, but Toxic put up a lot of SAMs. These are only Tech 2 gunships, and uh, I think this is not going to get any traction from Pepito, and Toxic will be able to just rebuild his shield. He's also putting static arty in, 
as well and it is raining down pain here that HQ is going to go down meanwhile out comes Geneva's GC and the GC's from Pepito focus it but look at this gunship power look at this Harvey power this is the most brutal thing I have ever seen poor old Pepito And Geneva finishes a flying fortress. Sure, there's one more GC coming in here from Pepito, but what chance does he have? This is insane. He he pushes south and he takes out the chicken, and he's got a GC and a monkey as well. This could be the his, his last ditch attempt to break through, but he can't really be worrying about that too much. He's got to sort of autopilot that in because all of his APM are going to have to be focused up here trying to stop this. I mean, what can he do about this? He's building ASFs mainly because he needs something to stop that immense amount of air power, but that means that he's only got this GC and this many Harveys are going to swarm it down. He's building more, he's trying to stop it, but what can he possibly do? And they're just walking in. Down goes his GC. Over here, we've got the GC and the monkey and the horde of bricks. And they were, looks like they were going to get something done. But the Tsar just flies over them. And that's going to eat them for breakfast. And the air grid is now under attack. A new GC from Geneva comes out of the water. The Tsar's taken out the monkey and it's going to town on the GC. And the air HQ is down. Everything's down. Pepito resigns and the hot team wins. Well, my dudes, what do you think of that? I think that that place where, where um, Geneva was able to take the restorers without having to take the air fight at the same time. And then using that to be able to win the air fight against Pepito just after. That was the turning point. Because after that... Hot team had air and cold team had nothing. And after that, it was just a textbook deconstruction of cold team. There you go. You were expecting a comeback, weren't you? Double bluff. No comeback. Well done to hot team. Tell me what you thought about that in the comments below while you're down there. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and obey. I'm the Commissar and I will see you next time.